rather, our private residents, were determined to be immediately eligible, individually eligible rather, for placement on the National Register of Historic Places. And that status would allow the homeowners to receive income tax benefits, state and federal, for improvements and changes, alterations, maintenance, and other uh, tasks they did to, to upgrade and maintain their properties. There were also seven commercial structures, three private schools, three churches, uh, one Masonic lodge, and two religious complexes, Holy Families and St. Monica's. So you're sitting right now in one of the structures that was determined by the state of Wisconsin to be eligible for the National Register of Historic Places. We have with us today Joe DeRose, one of the historians from the state of Wisconsin that was involved in that project. And we thought we would invite you here today for Joe to explain to you how that program works and how you obtain those tax credits. When Joe's presentation is done and all your questions have been answered, we want to just follow up with you for a discussion of historic districts. The state of Wisconsin determined that there are 12 historic districts in this, in this community. Each historic district and all the homes within it were to be placed on the National Register would entitle all of those homes, not just yours, but all of those homes to those tax benefits. But they have to be created and established. And so we'd like to have a discussion with you about that since most of you are in historic districts as well. So I'll turn the mic over to Joe DeRose, historian for the State Historical Society. Thank you, Joe. Well, thank you for coming out today. Again, my name is Joe DeRose. I work at the Wisconsin Historical Society in Madison. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit about the tax credit program. The National Register is, is largely an honorific program. It's not a regulatory program for private homeowners. Wisconsin's one of the few states in the country that has economic incentives for people that are doing work on their, on their residences. So I'd like to talk a little bit about that program um, just to fill you in on the details. In the back, I brought some bookmarks so you don't, don't feel like you have to furiously take notes because everything's on our website, which is wisconsinhistory.org. And uh, forget that, it's on the, the back of the bookmark. So feel free to take those. I literally have cases of those bookmarks under my desk and I take every opportunity to get rid of them. So thank you on that. If you have a question, um, feel free to, to, to uh, ask it while I'm going along here. Also, a lot of food and bottles of water over there. Feel free to get up and get a snack. I keep things pretty informal. Like Jess said, the, uh, a couple years ago, a survey was undertaken of, of Whitefish Bay. And the reason we do these surveys is to try to identify properties for listing in the National Register of Historic Places. Um, he mentioned that the large number of resources that qualified for that credit, and that's because of the, the well, uh, well maintained character there is of these buildings. That's why a lot of them qualify. So, here in a nutshell is what the tax credit program is. And, um, I tend to wander around, so let me know if you can't hear me if I, if I walk away from the microphone. In a nutshell, it's a 25% credit off of your state income taxes owed. It's not a property tax program, it's off of your state income taxes. So if you don't pay any state income tax, the project, it, the program's not going to work for you. There's also a federal credit that's available, but that's only for income producing properties. And again, there's details on our website, but um, commercial buildings would qualify for that, rental units, uh, but places like this, you know, religious buildings, um, they're not going to qualify because they don't have tax liability. We do several hundred, this slide's a little dated, we do several hundred of these projects around the state uh, each year. Uh, worth more than uh, several million dollars in rehab work. Uh, so the tax credit program gets a lot of support from both political parties. It's a job creator, it's a, it's a tax uh, credit, so a lot of folks uh, really enjoy the, the, the program. It's not the National Register of Pretty Houses. 
It's the National Register of Historic Places. This is actually a farmhouse up in Kewanee County that was listed in the National Register. And to be put on the National Register, a property has to be at least 50 years old, and it has to be significant for some reason. This property was listed because it's part of a larger farm that has about 14 or 15 outbuildings. So when you go to this farm, it's like stepping back in time. It's like stepping back to the 1870s. Property not only has to be old and significant, it has to have what's referred to as historic integrity. It has to be identifiable by the person that built it. If it's been so altered through the years that it's hardly recognizable, then it lacks historic integrity and it's not going to qualify for the National Register. This, this building actually reeked of historic integrity. Um, when it was built in 1870, it didn't have indoor plumbing, didn't have electricity, didn't have uh, insulation. Fast forward to the late 1990s, still didn't have indoor plumbing, still didn't have electricity, still didn't have insulation. The people that bought the property kind of wanted those things in their uh, newly acquired home, and they were able to use the tax credits to, to uh, uh, update the building. I was talking to the gentleman here uh, beforehand. The thing to remember with this, it's a, it's a preservation program. It's not, let's screw up our old house doing whatever we want to it program. It's, we're trying to get you to maintain the character of, of the building. Whitefish Bay has a, a lot of buildings that qualify for it. And there's a list back on the table. Buildings that are identified as being individually eligible for listing in the National Register qualify for the tax credit program. The key is that they're individually eligible, not as part of the historic district, but by themselves they meet the standards for listing. Whitefish Bay already has 12 houses and one duplex that are listed in the National Register, but on top of that are, are over 100 buildings that would qualify. Now, 83 of these are housing. If you have one of those 83 houses and it has a detached garage that's dates to the period of the house, then that would also qualify uh, for tax credits, like a new garage door, a new roof probably qualify. Okay, so here's, unfortunately it's a government program. There's going to be rules here. So there, uh, first of all, it has to be historic. Historic isn't old. Uh, I'm historic. I don't qualify for the National Register. That's what's meant by the being historic. It has to either be listed in the National Register or eligible for listing. That's the definition of historic. For the tax credit, for the uh, state tax credit program, it has to be owner occupied and non income producing. For the rental unit, there's a federal program uh, that's available. You have to meet a minimum of investment. You have to spend a minimum of $10,000 on the project. That's a lot of money. I understand that. But if you've ever priced a roof, uh, replacing a roof on a building, you can burn through ten grand in a hurry. Also, the project can be phased over up to five years. So instead of spending $10,000 all at once, it can be phased over up to five years. The eligible work is limited. On the exterior, it's re-roofing, um, tuck pointing, exterior painting, window repair, not replacement, repair. Remember, this is a preservation program. Um, on the interior, work that's allowed is updating the mechanicals. When we get the first heat wave in the summer, we get a lot of calls, our air conditioning conked out. Well, putting in central air qualifies for the tax credit. Um, just like in the winter when the heaters conk out, you get a lot of calls. So updating your, your heating and cooling system qualifies. Um, Rewiring, a lot of these older homes have knob and tube wiring in there, and, and uh, um, so replacing that is, is allowable. Things that are not allowable are more uh, uh, like plumbing fixtures. Putting in a fancy toilet or a sink that does not qualify uh, for the credit. 
If you have trouble sleeping, I, I suggest you read the Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation. It's a do's and don'ts of, of what you can and can't do to a building. Yeah. Flooring is included and it can replace some floors? Um, flooring is kind of a iffy issue. I know as, uh, we were talking earlier, I do not believe refinishing hardwood floors qualifies. I'm not the one that reviews the work, though, so. Uh, uh, to replace the entire, the wood itself, though, would that qualify? Probably not. No. Um, but that's, one thing you want to do is remember, I'm only a part of the project. Uh, there's two architects on our staff that actually do the review of the work. So if you're contemplating this, give them a call um, and, and see if, if what you are envisioning will qualify or not. If, let's say you already did it, then can, is there a retro, can you, if you were eligible at the time, then they, it is approved to get retroactively yeah. uh, The key part of this tax credit program, remember, is my office had no role in, in, in setting this up. The legislature did, and one of the things they put in was it is not retroactive. Mm -hmm. That's a story, no wiggle room, nothing. Okay. I mean, I can't tell you how many calls we get each week. I just put on a roof. Sorry. Um, there's a the two individuals, the architects, are they on your sheet there? Uh, they're on the website, uh, yeah, yeah, to the contacts on it. You have to formally apply. There's an application form, and those are on the website. Um, and if you, if you can write it, please be neat, because um, I have to try to read you. There's a five-year recapture, meaning that within five years of doing the work, if you sell the home or if you screw up the home, uh, we can uh, recapture the credit. And then this last one, touched on, reapproval is required. There's it's, it's no way to do that. So I'm going to go through each of these in a little more detail. Um, the definition of historic, again, has to be listed individually in the National Register of Statements. You know, they're par parallel programs, uh, just we administer one and the feds administer the other. But. So right now you have 12 houses that are listed individually. They can be a contributing element to a listed district. You have to mention these 12 historic districts that were identified. Until those districts are officially listed in the National Register, they don't qualify, uh, those buildings don't qualify for the tax credit. So there's ways of going about this. Uh, uh, listing a, a historic district in the National Register depends on how many buildings are in it, but it can range anywhere from $3,000 up to $20,000 to list a historic district, uh, depending on how big and complicated the district is. You know, that's some I've seen in the past the local unit of government puts the bill with it for uh, using uh, community development block grant money if that's available. Sometimes there's HUD money available for doing this. Um, sometimes the, the city or village sees it in the best interest to put the bill for it. And I've also seen instances where property owners will hold walking tours of their historic neighborhoods, charge admission, raise money that way, and hire somebody to do to prepare the nomination for listing. Um, so there's a variety of ways to get these districts listed, but again, the tax credit program will not kick in until they are formally listed. The exception is you can get pre preliminary certified if you're one of those 83 individually eligible buildings. Uh, I got a list up here, and there's a list in the back of what these are. If you're one of those buildings that's been identified as being individually eligible, meaning by itself it could get listed in the National Register, then you do qualify for the tax credit. You don't have to get that building listed in the National Register. You already qualify for it. Property must be owner-occupied, non-income producing. Um, I don't think it's too big of a problem here, but uh, sometimes we'll run into issues, especially in the northern part of the state, with like second homes or, or properties that are owned by folks from uh, Illinois or, or Minnesota. Remember, this is a state income tax program, so if you don't have 
uh, Wisconsin tax liability program is not going to work for you. I mentioned the minimum of investment. Again, it's $10,000 and it can be phased over a number of years. The key is get the work approved by my office first. Um, we are hard to believe when it's 20 degrees and snow on the ground, but the, the construction season is going to be coming here pretty soon. And if you're thinking of projects for this uh, spring and summer, by all means, give us a call before you start them. Because if you qualify, fantastic. Uh, then you can, you can do it. But if you start the work and you don't have the approval, there's nothing we can do about it. Here's the, the work again that's, that's allowable. Um, on the exterior, one thing I did mention, you know, landscaping's not included. Um, we do see sometimes patios, uh, retaining walls, that's kind of a gray area. Um, you have a lot of those types of historic components in this part of the state uh, where you, you do have very decorative uh, sidewalks and, and patio things. So see if they qualify. Give us, give us a call. Uh, yeah. Joe, when, you, when you're doing a project that entails a lot of work across the house um, and may in fact entail one or all of those, you, I, I understand from reading the documentation that it is explained that the determination or definition of project is vague. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to essentially, if I'm doing a master project of revitalization of the house, be able to isolate each one of those as a specific project within the master project and therefore be able to apply if I'm spending up to $10,000 each on each one of these to get an assignment of $10,000 for each one of these projects? Yeah, that, that's an excellent point. There's a, a $40,000 cap on a project. So, but there's no limit to the number of projects you can do. Uh, up in uh, point, we have a, a house that has dozens of projects. Now, you said 40,000 or 10,000? 40,000 is the limit of, of uh, the, the amount of work per project. So it's a $10,000 credit okay. per project. Right. But there's no limit to the number of projects. Okay. So, especially with more complex houses, larger scale houses, it's not uncommon to have a laundry list of projects. Yeah. And, so and our architects will work with you on that if they see that you know if you, you have fifty thousand dollars worth of work, they go, hey, you want to break this into two projects? So you just simply put together a uh, phase two application for exactly. each one of those. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Super. Yeah. Just follow up and do this point. I mean, the project has to have a ten thousand dollar minimum. You just extend it. Right. If you right. come well, okay. in with two five thousand dollar projects, right. you'd have to make one ten thousand dollar right. project. Yeah, you could come up, up, up with two forty thousand dollar projects for only eighty thousand and get the credit on each. Right. So the totality. Right. Yeah. There's, there's a minimum of a ten thousand dollar investment on, on the projects. Uh, again, uh, work on the exterior of the houses. A lot of the things that we typically see are uh, uh, exterior painting, tough pointing, porch repairs. Uh, a lot of houses in Milwaukee County um, tend to have copper gutters. Uh, that's a, a, a eligible expense. Uh, electrical systems, again, the knob and tube wiring, getting that replaced is, a, is an eligible expense. Putting in a new chandelier, not an eligible expense. Yeah. What, what is the typical timing of an adjudication of a phase two application? The timing. So what I, I submitted, I, I, I talked to you guys, I submitted the application. Because I, I need to have that approval before I actually start to work. What is the timing between when it's submitted and typically when it's approved? It depends. I, well, the architects don't want me to give dates because I guarantee you if I say, oh, it's a three-day turnaround. Right. Day well, four, somebody's screaming at us. No, that's fine. Is, um, is, it, is it weeks or is it months? Or no, something? no. It, it, it's days usually. What I tell people to do is, because our biggest enemy of this program is lack of knowledge. It's not uncommon for us to say, I just found out about it. I got a roofer in my driveway. Right. Uh, we really don't like that, but I mean, let us know. Like if you have a contractor, let's say you submit the, the application today, and you have a contractor set to come on Thursday. Call us, email us, let us know that that's going to happen, and we will do our best 
to get it approved. That's how we part of it. That, that's all I can say. But there's no, um, um, I think we have 30 days to respond, but we, we really try to turn these things around in a hurry. Yeah. I, I just want to point out the website does say three weeks. Yeah. They did get approval within three weeks. And uh, that'll be quicker than you get it from the village. <laughs> but the, the, thing to, the thing to remember with the approval is because it has to be approved ahead of time, don't feel like you're bugging us by contacting us frequently. I haven't gotten my approval. I'm scheduled to start on such and such a day. Uh, when you have myself included, there's three of us responsible for the state of Wisconsin. There's piles of these things, and it's not uncommon or unheard of if you you know, might get misplaced, so by all means, stay on top. Uh, plumbing systems are eligible. Again, the, uh, um, the, the piping, but not the, you know, the polar toilet, you know, that, that, that's not going to work. Um, mechanical systems, again, the heating, the air conditioning, uh, radiator uh, repair, those are, those are all uh, eligible expenses. Um, we used to collect photos of the the most bizarre heating units we had ever seen. Boy, some of these houses have the octopus heating unit in the basement. Oh my God. Uh, interior structural repairs. You're talking about flooring, um, you know, like subfloors and stuff. That's not going to be a problem. The, the decorative finishes, that's where you start uh, running in, in the issues. What about walls? Um, you know, plaster repair. Yeah. You know, that, that qualifies. Um, tearing out the plaster and putting in drywall probably is and what about a basement that was never finished? Uh, I think that would probably fall into the cosmetic category and not. And not really. Okay. Um, you can tell by the length of the, uh, the web address there uh, that this is, this is a uh, lengthy document. Uh, but if you just if you Google Secretary of the Interior Standards, you'll you'll be able to find the. In a nutshell, what, the, what they are is you want to repair historic fabric instead of replacing it. That's what it all boils down to. Uh, so if you have decorative brackets on, on the house and one of them's rotted, we want you to uh, either see if you can repair that bracket um, or use the other ones as a template to reconstruct it. Uh, the biggest issues we were, we were talking earlier are windows. Um, windows appear to be the alluring sighting salesman of the 21st century, whereas uh, I'm always hearing, well, the person said we have to replace all of our windows. Mm -hmm. Okay, who did you hear that from? The salesman told me that. That doesn't sound like a conflict of interest. I'm not saying that windows don't need to be replaced, because it does, they do. But, Again, this program is to preserve historic fabric, so we're going to want to try to repair those historic windows before we start replacing them. When they do need to be replaced, we want a similar type of window in there. So if you're looking at a, a window that tilts in and has muttons, the wooden muttons, um, kind of divide the, the window into six panes of glass and those snap right in there, not going to qualify for the program, uh, but you can. There are a number of window companies out there that make historic reproduction windows. Uh, pricing, that's going to be all over the board. But uh, again, keep in mind what the program is designed to do. It's designed to preserve the historic character of the building, historic thing. So that's what the, the standards are. Um, the application, uh, we, we've tried to streamline the state application as much as we can, but unfortunately we still do need an application. Uh, we can't do word of mouth. There's three parts to the uh, application process. We weren't very original with the names. Part one, the first step, is what certifies that building as historic. That's the part that I do. I can, I can actually answer questions today about the part one, because that's what I would do. The building has to be historic. Remember, it has to either be listed in the National Register, already listed, or individually eligible for listing. If it's not one of those two, 
there's a chance it still might be deemed historic, but you're going to have to prove it to us. You're going to have to send me information that uh, when this survey was done, it was very well done, but they didn't look at every building in detail. It wasn't that amount of money. So they obviously they overlooked the history of some buildings. So if you come up with more information about a building, we'll, I'll take a look at it. Um, but if it's not already listed or individually listed, it's going to be a, a, a tough uphill battle. But I'll work with you to see if we can make a case for it to qualify. But if it's not on that list back there, there's a very good chance it's not going to qualify. But uh, we, we are able to make it work sometime. Part two, that's where the architects come in. This is where you spell out what you plan on doing. We plan on tuck point. We're going to spell out how you're going to tuck point. Um, you're going to spell out, we're going to put a new roof on it. Okay, we want to know what type of shingles you're going to be putting on it. Um, we're going to put a new furnace in. Okay, how, how's that going to be vented? That's all spelled out in the part two. And then at the end, it's, you tell us, we did what we said we were going to do. We did it the way you told us to. Certify us. And, and we sign off on the project, and then you can deduct 25% of those costs off of your state income tax. So that, that's the process. And again, that weird bluish purple color is the website, but if, uh, uh, it's wisconsinhistory.org. If you just look for uh, homeowners tax credit, you'll be able to find that. Okay. There is a, a recapture provision in there, and that's if you sell the building within five years of taking the credit or diminish its historical significance. And, uh, that's either through damage or, or something like that. And I hate to keep harping on this, but uh, it's not retroactive. There's, there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, the federal one, if you have an income producing property, like a rental unit or a commercial building, that is retroactive. It's hard, but it can be done. Um, but that's the federal program. That's for income producing properties. And even in that case, we really urge you to get your work approved ahead of time just so you're not setting yourself up for failure down the road. But, uh, so I think that's, that's all that I have. Um, if there's questions, I mean, it's all. Uh, we covered a lot of things here, but uh, I'd be happy to go into more detail about any of the projects uh, as far as what you're going to be doing to your building. Understand, I'm not the person reviewing that, so I can just give you some real general guidelines. If you start saying, I want to put in this type of window, I'm not, I'm not going to help you. How does, how does uh, 